The Turtle Beach is famous for their excellent professional ISA sound card. But sound cards being professional doesn't necessarily mean they are any good for gaming, at least in DOS. We'll find out today if the Turtle Beach Pinnacle is or isn't any good. The Turtle Beach Company was founded in 1975 in New York by Robert Hoke and Roy Smith. It may be a bit surprising, but their first product wasn't a sound card but a sound sample editing software called SampleVision. There was no competition back in the day, so the Simple Vision became pretty much standard, as well as the Turtle Beach name. In 1990, they shifted gears and came out with their first audio hardware, 56K Digital Recording System. It was the first recording interface for a PC. Their first sound card was called Multisound. It was released in 1992, cost about $1,000 and was considered to be one of the best sound cards of their time. Then they released numerous sound cards and wavetable doorboards, pretty much all of them were excellent. Then in 1996 the Turtle Beach was acquired by Vitra, and since then it went slowly downhill, they started producing crappy, cheap PCI sound cards, and in 2005 they released their first headset. Now they make crappy gaming headsets everybody hates or doesn't care about. The Pinnacle is a 16-bit OSA sound card which uses Turtle Beach's own DSP called Hurricane, based around Motorola chipset and unlike the rest of the sound cards from that era which used 16-bit DACs and ADCs, the Pinnacle has 20-bit DAC and ADC. Apart from that, it was the highest quality sound card at the time of release, at least specs-wise. It was pretty much reflected on the price, which was $600 US in 1996. Today's prices can be quite steep as well, ranging from 400 to about 700 US dollars. It's a full-length ISA card, chocolate block with chips and components. This small chip right here is the most important chip the card features for any DOS gamer. It contains 4 megabytes of general MIDI compatible samples of Kurzweil synthesis compressed in 2 megabyte ROM. While Kurzweil is known for producing excellent synthesizers, it still doesn't mean the Pinnacle is any good for DOS games, does it? The card is plug and play, but the base address can be set manually with these jumpers for DOS, Windows 3 and Windows NT. Looking at the backplate, you'll find all the standard inputs and outputs there. Mic, line in, auxiliary in, line out and MIDI connector. As many other sound cards from that era, even the Pinnacle has some CD-ROM connectors. One IDE port for a CD drive and two connectors for CD audio coming out of the CD drive. Right next to the IDE port is another port for Turtle Beach Digital Input Output Daughter Board. And of course Wave Blaster Connector that allows you to connect any Wavetable Daughter Board, even large ones such as Yamaha XG50. Let's have a look at Windows first. The driver is for Windows 95, but it's working perfectly fine on the Windows 98. Yeah, perfectly fine, unless you're using hardware the card is not chuffed with. You see, when I was installing the card, it was first in a slot 1 motherboard with BX chipset. Windows had no problem with the driver during the installation, but the card refused to work. It was constantly complaining about the base address, and no matter what I set it to or how I set the BIOS and jumpers, it just didn't work. Then I tried this motherboard for Pentium 1, and voila, it's working fine, and right at the first attempt. Turtle Beach cards are known for their crystal clear output, but more importantly, their MIDI capabilities. In Windows 95 you get to use the internal sample set, or you can switch to a wavetable daughter board, or you can connect some external MIDI module, or you can add memory and load better sample bank, which I don't have. To install the DOS driver you need either Windows 95, 98 or Windows 3. When the Windows driver is installed, you get this directory and couple of files in there. The Pinnacle doesn't work in plug and play mode under DOS, so you have to set the base address manually using these jumpers and then edit its config file. PinCFG program initializes the card and you're set. I've discovered a tiny problem. When the computer boots up into DOS and the card is initialized, the output volume is so low it's almost inaudible.
there's no utility for volume control or anything like that. I was a bit frustrated it's not gonna work. But then I tried to install Windows 3 and the Pinnacle driver in it. With the driver comes volume control program for Windows. I set the volume, tried running Doom under Windows and it worked perfectly. Then I shut down Windows, tried running Doom from DOS and... That went well, but after I restarted the rig, the volume was low again. So to make it work properly under DOS, you need to run Windows 3, let it to initialize the card, exit Windows and you're set. Not exactly what I'd call perfect, but that's as good as it gets. What about games, you ask then? Well, the card is not Sound Blaster or Redlip compatible and doesn't produce sound under DOS, only MIDI music. You can set whatever you want in a game setup, you just won't get the sound out of it. MIDI on the flip side works properly. I've set the MIDI ports to standard 330, so any game that supports general MIDI or Sound Canvas or MP401 should work. But let's get the sound working first. To do that, I just put in Sound Blaster 16, loaded drivers and that was it. The sound was working perfectly fine, but this was MIDI in Duke 3D. And Doom. It's not exactly stellar, in it. The fix was quite simple. I just forgot to change the MPU port on the Sound Blaster from the default 330 to something else. And after that... Brilliant. Even though the instruments are overall excellent and the card is fully general MIDI compatible, some games sound a little bit off. other games sound brilliant.
feel like the default onboard sample set is not good enough, you can expand the card in a couple of ways. You can add memory and load some sample bank, or you can connect a MIDI module to its MIDI interface, or you can connect some sort of wavetable dot board to its wave blaster connector. If you want to use wavetable dot board in Windows 3 or 95, you need to switch the output to a dot board in MIDI settings, and then the dot board is used by Windows. The same goes for MIDI modules. You have to set it to external and MIDI interfaces used. You can use it to listen to MIDI files, to compose music, play Windows games, whatever. The issue is, there's no way, at least I haven't found one, to set it up in DOS. DOS always uses internal general MIDI set no matter what I tried. I was trying to make it work for one reason, the MT32. MIDI modules or daughter boards can be connected through other cards you've got in a rig, the Sound Blaster 16 in my case. The MT32 though, may be a little bit problematic. You see, the MT32 is a bit picky regarding a MIDI interface it connects to. When the MT32 was released, it relied on the MPU-401 MIDI interface. The MPU-401 uses so-called intelligent mode. That being said, pretty much every OSA sound card has a MIDI interface, but all of them use a UART mode, also called the demo mode. In the demo mode, about half of the games that support MT32 don't work. As far as I know, the only sound card that supports intelligent mode is Ensonic Soundscape. But I was told by a mate of mine, which lent me the pinnacle, that it's probably got intelligent mode as well, so let's have a gander if it's true or not. I know, I said the MIDI interface doesn't work in DOS, but during the testing, I've discovered something interesting. First, I tried Gabriel Knight, which doesn't require intelligent mode. In the game setup, I've noticed it detected the MT32, so I selected it and ran the game. The MT32 didn't make any sound, unfortunately, but strangely enough, the Pinnacle itself did. Some instruments are off because the Pinnacle is clearly using its general MIDI set to emulate the LA synth, but it's working and it's rather good for what there is.
now the pinnacle. Alright, that's enough. You see, the FX is a bit special. It sounds horrible using pretty much anything but the MT32, so this abomination was quite anticipated. Now let's try some games that need intelligent mode. And again, some games sound surprisingly good. Moreover, I've never noticed this before, but there's bloody Godzilla running about in the background. The next game was Bad Blood. It was fine until I got some hanging notes. Every game I tried worked, some better than others. Apart from the Ansonic soundscape, this is the only card I know you can play games that require intelligent mode. Well, you can't use actual MT32 because the MIDI interface doesn't work, but the emulation or whatever you wanna call it works in every game.
So to wrap this up, since I don't care about gaming in Windows, which the Pinnacle does pretty well when it's working, the DOS performance is not exactly stellar. It's got some problems with certain hardware, you need Windows 3 to adjust volume in DOS, you need another sound card to get sounds out of games, Wave Blaster connector doesn't work in DOS and MIDI interface doesn't work either. On the flip side, the MT32 emulation is working great, I mean the emulation itself, not what's coming out of the car that is. It supports General MIDI, which also worked in every game I tried, and the General MIDI set is brilliant, not perfect though. The signal coming out of the card is perfectly clean, no hum or noise or stuff like that. If you just want to listen to MIDI, compose music or use it for Windows gaming, the Pinnacle is brilliant. For DOS, there are tons of better sound cards out there, well, pretty much any ISA sound card will do. And that pretty much wraps it up. If you're a collector, the Turtle Beach Pinnacle is a very nice addition to your collection. If you're not, don't waste your money and time on it. Cheers, bye.